What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we just finished watching the Texans versus the Browns playoff game. Shout out to everyone that joined us live on YouTube and Twitch. And the Texans obviously got the job done. So you see I'm in my Texans gear. You see I got the Ray-Bans on. I'm still celebrating, having a great time, about to head out. Probably go to a car meet and then turn up with a couple of the homies or whatnot so before i do that i wanted to make sure i got a video out for you guys i'm feeling real good i want to make sure i drop some content before i turn up tonight so you know you gotta embrace the texans gear for this particular video but we're gonna check out 10 wwe wrestlers who had the biggest wrestlemania downgrades now it's it's a weird situation where sometimes someone can be at the top of the mountain they could be main eventing wrestlemania or at the top of the card at a previous wrestlemania and then years later whatever happens maybe injury or someone else takes their spot because they they uh, end up getting over or maybe there's some backstage heat and that person loses favor with vince and you know some of the people in the creative they end up down lower on the card and they end up even on the pre-show or not even on the show at all it happens it's a revolving door when it comes to wrestling some people are at the top and they stay at the top for a while some people at the top for a little bit and they slowly start dropping down the card so we're gonna check out some of these instances appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel let's get right into this one man WrestleMania event should be one of the highlights of a record. on. I can hear a damn thing in my headphones. <laughs> wrestler's career. WrestleMania is the biggest event in all of pro wrestling, and numerous wrestlers have had the honor of gracing the grandest stage of them all. Yeah. However, it's often the case that a wrestler has a prominent spot on a WrestleMania card, and by the time the next installment of WWE Signature Pay-Per-View comes around, they have fallen dramatically down the card. Mm -hmm. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE wrestlers who had the biggest WrestleMania downgrade. Subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already. Be sure already. to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. Number 10, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho has wrestled some iconic names at WrestleMania. However, Jericho's downgrade from WrestleMania 28 to 29 was truly shocking. At WrestleMania 28, Jericho challenged CM Punk for the WWE title yeah, in one of the did. key matches on the show. Yet at WrestleMania 29, Jericho would face off against yeah. Fandango. When that. Jericho heard about the booking plans for WrestleMania 29, he was furious. And when he found out that Vince McMahon wanted him to lose the match, the anger reached a boiling point. Wow. Jericho was so annoyed with his creative direction that he had almost quit the company. However, it was a chat with the legendary Undertaker which led to Jericho changing his mind and doing his job to the best of his ability. And that's because the Undertaker, he's a, he's a locker room leader. And that makes sense. He probably would have been the only person that Chris Jericho would have took into consideration to do the match. Not even Vince McMahon could have probably saved that situation. The Undertaker did. That's how much respect everyone in the industry has for The Undertaker. He was able to talk to him. Hey, just do the job, bro. I, I would appreciate it if you did the job. Something like that. That's, that's the type of level of respect The Undertaker has, bro. Thankfully for Jericho, the next time we would compete at WrestleMania would be in 2016 at WrestleMania 32. And this time, Jericho was in a much better position uh -huh. as he would face off against AJ Styles in AJ's WrestleMania debut. Yeah. Number 9, Sheamus. WrestleMania 26 was a huge night for Sheamus. Sheamus would take on Triple H in one of the top matches on the show, and despite him coming up short in the match, his performance received positive reviews, and the match is considered rather underrated when it comes to WrestleMania matches. This is very true. The following year, Sheamus would initially be booked to face Daniel Bryan for the US title, and it goes without saying that wrestling Bryan wasn't a step down, yet in 2011, Bryan had yet to emerge as WWE's uh -huh. top guys, and they I were see. still hesitant to push Bryan into the main event scene. Sheamus' matches with Brian would shockingly be moved to the dark match, and it even got worse when the match morphed That's into a cold. battle royal, and the battle royal would be won by the great Kali. The following year at WrestleMania 28, WWE would book a match between Sheamus and Brian once again, and this time for the world title, and the match infamously ended in 18 seconds. 
Number eight. Which is kind of cold when you think about it. it it's kind of cold. <laughs> That's cold. <laughs> but it ultimately spurred the yes movement. It, it really caught it. That win, that quick win, catapulted another wrestler's career. Would you, when you really think about it. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Throughout the Attitude Era, Stone Cold Steve Austin was WWE's number one guy. For sure. However, when they entered 2002, WWE began to push other talents and Austin was often butting heads with WWE creative. Uh -huh. At WrestleMania 18, Austin was booked to face Scott Hall and Austin had zero interest in the match. Although Hall was a great wrestler, Austin was going from wrestling The Rock in the main event of WrestleMania 17 to a match at WrestleMania 18 that fans didn't have much investment in. Yeah. On an episode of Grill and JR, Jim Fair Ross, point. who remains one of Austin's closest friends, stated that Austin Scott. had every right to be annoyed with a thrown together program at WrestleMania 18. Number seven, Drew McIntyre. And, and that's a very fair point. It, and when you really think about it, he went from WrestleMania 17 to that amazing match he had with The Rock to the next year, not to discredit Scott Hall, but, you know, at the end of the day, that was a peak he was at a peak and even then the match he had with them obviously wasn't you know it wasn't the best but it wasn't the worst either it's still once again no disrespect to scott hall it's still kind of a step down at that time period from rock stone cold main event in wrestlemania 17 one of the best main events of all time in my personal opinion entire when Drew McIntyre returned to WWE in 2017, he was instantly pushed up the card. Yep. McIntyre won the NXT title, and before fans knew it, McIntyre was back on the main roster in a featured role. McIntyre had notable WrestleMania matches for a number of years, and these included matches with WWE's number one guy, Roman Reigns, and two back-to-back -back WWE title matches. However, when WWE arrived at WrestleMania 38, McIntyre's plan match was to see him face Baron Corbin. When it was initially reported online that McIntyre vs. Corbin was the planned match for WrestleMania 38, fans thought some kind of swerve was being planned, yet this was WWE's definitive direction. Yeah, I remember that. I was like, uh, we, we ain't got nothing better for Drew. Granted, the cool moment is he's the first person to ever kick out the end of days. That's what makes, that's the only good thing about that match. It was a solid match, but that's the, that's the best thing people would take about, take away from it. He's the only person at that time, to ever kick out of the end of days. That was a crowd popping moment. In a move nobody expected, McIntyre addressed the fan backlash to the match in an interview with Metro UK, and this is what the former champion had to say. I'm very excited about it personally. I've seen some of the comments when the match was made. The internet can be a harsh place. Of course. <laughs> I appreciate all my fans around the world. Their reaction is, Drew's not wrestling for the title. He won the title from Brock two years along. He fought for the title last year. This year, he's fighting Corbin. That's what we were all saying. I understand saying. that, and I appreciate that. But the way I see it is, aside from his obvious talent in the ring, anyone who says he's not talented in ring is lying to themselves. We actually have a genuine hated bad guy that everyone genuinely dislikes. If people online are saying that this guy is such a good bad guy, he really entertains me, that's not a good bad guy. A true bad guy is someone you literally despise and you want to see get their butt kicked. That's what we've got right now. And that's what I've got in my story with Corbin. Number six. Well, that's the thing. None of us wanted to see that. I, I get it. And Drew, shout out to him for having Baron Corbin's back as you should. But hey, Drew, let me keep it a buck. No disrespect to Corbin. I don't think Corbin's a bad wrestler. I just think he hasn't really been able to connect with the crowd, especially with the trash ass gimmicks they've been giving him. Granted, he's doing much better in NXT, but at the same time, main roster just, it's not working. It hasn't worked. Um, Drew definitely deserves way better than fucking Baron Corbin at that time. And even now. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> King Kong Bundy. King Kong Bundy is mostly known to WWE fans for being in the main event of WrestleMania 2. Bundy collided with Hulk Hogan inside a steel cage, yet the following year, Bundy's stock had fallen so much that his WrestleMania 3 role was reduced to one of a comedic nature. At Sounds WrestleMania right. 3, Bundy was involved in a mixed six-man tag match. He would team up with midget wrestlers at Little Tokyo and Lord Littlebrook against Hillbilly Jim, The Haiti Kid, and Little Beaver. 
The infamous match would mark Bundy's last WrestleMania appearance until WrestleMania 11, where Bundy would be defeated by The Undertaker in Bundy's final ever time on the grandest stage of them all. That's crazy. Number 5. Ronda Rousey Upon returning to WWE in 2022, Ronda Rousey was propelled into a primary spot in the company. Rousey would win the 2022 Women's Royal Rumble and go on to challenge Charlotte Flair for the women's title at WrestleMania 38. Although the build to the match was underwhelming, they still presented and marketed the match as one of the biggest matches on the show, yet the match was an indication that Rousey's second run in the company wasn't going to live up to expectations. Mm. The match was so flat and lifeless that yeah. this would be a trend that would continue throughout Rousey's second run. Rousey's feuds with Charlotte Flair, Liv Morgan and Shotzi were all negatively received, and by the time that WrestleMania 39 season came around, there was no desire from fans to see Rousey in a prominent role on the WrestleMania card. Rousey will be placed in the Women's WrestleMania Showcase That's Fatal 4-Way Tag Team match, bro. teaming with Shayna Baszler, and although her team won, the match was considered a substantial yet justified step down compared to the year prior. That's Number crazy four. when you think about it, bro. It's just it's fucking wild, bro. The downfall of her whole second run is just crazy. Just crazy. Lex Luger WrestleMania 10 was truly Lex Luger's peak in WWE. Luger would face off against Yokozuna for the WWE title, and although he lost the match via DQ, a title match at WrestleMania isn't something to write off. Fast forward to WrestleMania 11, and WWE and Vince McMahon have completely lost faith in Luger ever being a top guy in the company, and this was made clear by Luger's match at the show. At WrestleMania 11, Luger was in the opening contest as he teamed with the British Bulldog against the Blue Brothers in a match that could easily have been moved to an episode of Raw, or even Yo. Superstars. The tag match would mark Luger's final ever WrestleMania appearance as he would depart WWE in August of 1995. Number 3. Bray Wyatt peace, Bray Wyatt had the honor of walking into WrestleMania 33 as WWE Champion. Oh Wyatt God. would wrestle Randy Orton on the show, yet the following year all WWE He still should have won that match. He should have won that fucking match. He should have won against John Cena at WrestleMania 30. They, they really... I'm going to be honest with you. They dropped the ball with Bray. They dropped the ball with Bray so many times. He should have never lost to John Cena at WrestleMania 30. He shouldn't have never lost the title to Randy Orton when he had the WWE Champion. They just, ah. Uh, he shouldn't have lost to Randy Orton when he came back as the Fiend. I thought they were going to do the, he thought they were going to do the, the right thing there. He still lost. That is just, ah. Uh, could deliver with Wyatt was a cameo appearance on the pre-show. Wyatt would interfere in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal as he would assist Matt Hardy in winning the match. Yeah. Whilst it was great to see the legendary Wyatt on the WrestleMania stage, was this truly the best booking move that WWE could have come up with? No. Going from a WWE title better. match to a pre-show cameo appearance wasn't a great look, and WWE could have easily delivered something more in line with Wyatt's star power. They gave him a cool, a cool moment with Matt, but no, he could have been in something way better number two booker t oh man wwe hall of famer booker t has had a bizarre history at wrestlemania booker has been in a world title match a pre-show match and even wrestled a boogeyman wrestlemania 19 was arguably booker's biggest match at wrestlemania as yeah. he faced off against triple h for the world title and there's a common consensus amongst the fan base that this is a match that booker should have won but unfortunately Obviously. it wasn't meant to be Booker remained popular and relevant following WrestleMania 19, yet at WrestleMania 20, Booker was defending the tag titles with Rob Van Dam in a fatal four-way showdown. Booker and RVD would defend against the Dudley Boys, Caden Jindrak, and La Resistance. Whilst not the most lackluster match in the world, the match was seen as a low point of WrestleMania 20, as the match outcome was seen as predictable by many. The following year, Booker would even fall further down the card, yeah. as he wouldn't even make the main show. The multi-time world champion would win a forgettable pre-show battle royal by eliminating the masterpiece Chris Masters. And number one, The Miz. The main event of WrestleMania 27 received vast criticism as fans and WWE talent questioned if The Miz belonged in the main event position. Yep. Those who claimed that Miz's this. main event run would be one-time deal were proven right the following year when Miz would be relegated to wrestling in the monotonous Team Teddy vs oh, Team Johnny matchup at WrestleMania 28. At WrestleMania 29, two years after main eventing WrestleMania alongside John Cena, Miz wasn't even able to make the main show. Miz's intercontinental title match with Wade Barrett would be moved to the pre-show, and wild. despite his victory in the match, it was a clear sign that Miz was never going to main event the biggest show of the year ever again. Yep. But there you have it, folks. 
entertain WWE. And that's a fair one. That's a fair one. Yeah, because he was in the main event with John Cena. And then just started falling down the card. <laughs> I mean, at this past year's WrestleMania, he was just a host. That's it. He was just a host. So, but it happens. It happens. It's 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 a part of the wrestling biz. One year you could be at the top of the mountain. Next year you literally could not even be on the mountain at all. Comment down below. Let me know some other wrestlers you feel like had a a good moment at WrestleMania. Even it wasn't even if it wasn't in like a main event spot, but they were prominently featured in WrestleMania in a good situation. Only four years later, they end up on the pre-show or it end up on the sh not being on the show at all. Let me know if they weren't on this list. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Roll to 150K. And I'm still here on the speed of YouTube. Rest of the champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.